tisa inasema ya kwamba kundi kuu lina sifu mbinguni in, in, in a song saying worthy to open the scroll and to open its seals inasema unastahili kufunua kitabu na kufungua ya mihuri zake because you were slain kwa sababu ulichinjwa and with your blood purchased for men for god from every tribe and language and people and nation na kwa damu yako umewanunua watu kutoka katika kila kabila na uh, ndimi zote so you have called them from every language from every tribe from every kindred umewaita kutoka kwa lugha tofauti kutoka taifa tofauti and have made them unto god na kings and priests umewafanya kwake Mungu makuhani na wafalme that they should reign forever na wakatawale milele revelation 16 we are a kingdom of kings and priests ufunuo moja tisa tano inasema sisi ni jamii ya kifalme na makuhani Ephesians 2 verse 6 that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places wa Efeso inasema tumeketi na Mungu katika Uh, mahali pa juu Ephesians 3 verse 10 that the manifold wisdom might be known to principalities by the church Na Waefeso inasema tena ya kwamba hekima iliyokuu ya Mwenyezi Mungu ijulikane katika nguvu za kiza kupitia kanisa Ephesians 3 verse 10 Waefeso 3 So the purpose of God sasa kusudi la Mungu was that we should be the kingdom of kings and priests tukue ufalme wa makuhani That is the original ufalme. intention of man na of ni, God for man ni kusudi la Mwenyezi Mungu kwa mwanadamu And we looked at the operations of the kingdom yesterday na tukaangalia chizi ya utendakazi wa ufalme but jana. before then we said that you cannot transact the business of the kingdom before you are citizen of the kingdom na kabla ya hiyo tulisema hawezi fanya biashara ya ufalme mradi ukue mwenyeji wa and you are born into the kingdom by the spirit na unazaliwa kwa ufalme kupitia roho we said nicodemus went to jesus tukasema nicodemus demu alienda kwa Yesu and he says uh, rabbi you are a man from god for none can do the things that you do except god be with him akasema mwalimu wewe na hisi unatoka kwa mungu kwa maana hakuna yeyote anaweza tenda mambo yenye unatenda kama hajatoka kwa mungu jesus says that surely i say unto you no one can see the kingdom unless he's born again yesu akamwambia hakika na kuambia hakuna awezaye kuona ufalme paka azaliwe tena. Kodema says how can it be? Can we go back to my mother's womb and be born? Nikodema akasema itakuwaje nitaingia tena tumbo la mamangu nizaliwe tena. Jesus said surely I say unto you. Yesu akasema kwa hakika na kwa No one can enter the kingdom. Hakuna awezaye kuingia katika ufalme. Unless is born of the water and the spirit. Ila azaliwe kwa maji na kwa roho. Says marvel not that I say unto you akasema usishangae ninakwambia you must be born again lazima uzaliwe mara whatever is born of the flesh is flesh kwa maana chenye kimezaliwa na mwili ni mwili and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit na chenye kimezaliwa na roho ni roho says for the wind bloweth where it wills kwa sababu upepo unavuma penye unapenda you hear the sound thereof wasikia sauti yake but you know it's not whence it cometh from or where it goes na how jui yatoka wapi wala yaelekea wapi so is a man born of the spirit chinzi hivyo mtu yoyote ambaye kingdom citizenship is accessed by the spirit au uh, kuingia katika ufalme unaingilia kupitia roho because if you're born of the flesh kama umezaliwa na mwili you operate in the flesh wewe ni wa kimwili but if you're born of the spirit lakini ukizaliwa na roho then you can transact spiritual issues utafanya biashara za kiroho but the government of god lakini serikali ya mungu is ruled by those who are born of the spirit inatawaliwa na wenye wamezaliwa kwa roho we say that salvation is not just an improvement a self improvement program tukasema uokofu sio kujinufaisha wewe kibinafsi but is a total metamorphosis La- a new birth lakini ni kuzaliwa tena ni kuishwa that's why second corinthians 5:17 says we are new creation ni posa wa korintho 2:17 
We are not an improvement of our former selves. We say the Spirit gives you power over sin. Galatians 5.16 Walk after the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Say the Spirit reveals to you the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. Wakorintho wa kwanza mbili tisa. But no eye has seen, no, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has kept for those who love him. Hapana macho yenye imeona, wala kuingia katika mioyo za watu, mambo yenye mungu ameandalia wale wa mpendao. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Lakini mungu ameyafunua yote kwetu kupitia roho. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Kwa maana roho hutafuta mambo ya nia ya Mungu na ndio ametufundulia hayo mambo. The revelations of the treasures that God has kept for us can only be done by the Spirit. Ufunuo na rasilimali yenye Mungu ametuwekea inatufunuliwa kwetu sisi kupitia roho wa Mungu. Say the Spirit helps us understand his word. Na roho anatusaidia tukaelewe neno lake. John 14:26 Yohana 14:26 shall bring to remembrance whatever things I've said to you. Na anatufa, anatuleta tufahamu ama tukumbuke mambo yenye tumefunzwa. 1 Corinthians 2:14. Wa Korintho wa kwanza 2:14. The carnal mind understandeth not the things of the spirit. Ya kwamba mtu wa kiasili haelewi mambo ya kiroho. Neither does he know them. Wala haitambui. For their foolishness to him. Kwa maana kwake ni upumbavu. These can only be designed spiritually. Hizi zaweza pambanuliwa tu kwa roho. It gives also effectiveness in ministry. Inatupa pia ule ujeledi katika huduma. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2:4, Paulo anasema katika Wakorintho wa kwanza 2:4, that my preaching and my conversation among you was not with enticing words of men's wisdom. Ya kwamba maneno yangu na mahubiri yangu haikuwa na maneno ya kuwatumbuiza but the demonstration of the spirit and of power lakini ilikuwa ya kutenda kazi kwa roho na nguvu the spirit of god is critical roho wa mungu ni wa muhimu in giving you the ministry we said kwa kupa wewe huduma ministry Tulisema is hiyo. given by the spirit tulisema huduma unapewa na roho reveals to you your area of service anakufunulia maeneo ya wewe kutenda Acts kazi Acts 13:2 uh, matendo ya mitume 13:2 Barnabas and Silas were separated by the spirit for works that God had called them to Sauli na Paranaba waliwekwa kando ama wakfu kwa ajili ya kazi yenye roho aliwatengea The spirit of God equips you with gifts to be effective in ministry Roho wa Mungu pia anakupa vipawa za wewe ama karama za wewe kufanya kazi Romans 12:6 to 8 Warumi 12:6 mpaka 8 1 Corinthians 12:8 to 10 O Korintho wa kwanza 12:6 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 30. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 11. Wa Efeso, tano, the Spirit produces fruit in us. Roho anazalisha tunda ndani mwetu. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Wa Kalathia, tano, so the Spirit of God uh, abides in us forever, Jesus promised. Roho wa Mungu anakaa ndani mwetu milele. John 6:63 John 6:63 6, shall abide with you forever and then we say the foundation tukasema msingi upon which the operation of the kingdom is best ambapo utenda kazi wa ufalme unakaa is called righteousness ina and we've seen a champion of the righteousness of God. His name is Phinehas. Uh, Phinehas was a man who was given to the righteousness of God. And we say Phinehas was not, uh, we are not talking about the son to Eli. Na tukiongea Phinehas hatusemi 
kama wana wa Eli not the son of Eli yeye hakuwa mwana wa Eli but the son of Eliezer lakini ni mwana wa Eliezer who was the son of Aaron ambaye ni mwana wa Aruni the same was the high priest ambaye ni kuhani alikuwa so kuhani we mkuhani. saw how he was zealous tukaona chenzia alikuwa na wivu the bible tells us in psalms chapter 1 or 6 tukas uh, biblia yatuambia katika saburi 106 there was he was zealous alikuwa na wivu for the righteousness of god ya haki ya mungu maybe we go back there 106 verse 30 and read that mstari wa 30 Saburi 106 verse 30. He says then stood Phinehas and executed judgment and saw the plague was stayed. Na akasimama Phinehasi akaweka hukumu na tauni ikasimama. Verse 31 and that was counted unto him for righteousness and to all generations forevermore. Na ikesabika kwake haki na vizazi vyake milele na milele. And we looked at how he was able to execute that in numbers 25. Na tukaona chenzia file alivyowezeka hiyo katika uh, kitabu cha hesabu. How he destroyed file aliharibu angamiza. the house of misery and cosby nyumba ya misri na kosbi and made sure that the plague was stayed from the camp of israel. Akanyamazisha tauni katika kambi ya wanaisraeli. Then we looked up on uh, the attack to the midianites tukaona uh, hata kushambulia wa midiani and moses was attacking his own family the midianites na musa alikuwa anakabiliana na jamii yake ya wa midiani that was in numbers 31 hiyo ni hesabu 31 and now we want to look at another example of finhas's exploits na tutataka tuangalie pia matendo fulani ya Finehasi in Joshua chapter 22 Joshua 22 Joshua chapter 22 Joshua 22 and as usual we are going to read so that we follow the story tutasoma ndiposa tufuatilie habari hii let's read uh, Joshua chapter 22 verse 1 mstari wa kwanza then Joshua called the Rubenites ah let's go back then Joshua again Joshua I, who are those do you understand who those are who are the rubenites yeah? it's a study you know it's a study who are the rubenites ni nani wa rubeni yeah? kabila hmm. what well, the descendants wale ambao wamezaliwa na nani ruben na ruben alikuwa nani mwana wa yakob Okay. Gadites. Who are those? Watoto wa Gad. Ushaimsikia Gad. Unamkumbuka Gad? Okay. And the half tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh alikuwa nani? Mtoto wa Eh? Yusuf. Eh? Lakini alihesabiwa kama mwana wa nani? Wa Yakobo. Okay. Now with that understanding let's continue. It says and said unto them you have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Mm -hmm. You have not left your brethren unto this day but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. Verse 4. And now the Lord your God has given rest unto your brethren as he promised them. Let's read.
Hallelujah. Are you able to understand what you have read? It was, it was deliberate that you read. Because any time you read scripture is good to get the context. So, reading the whole story, you know the, the development of the story. It's okay that you finished reading the story. Did you understand what you read? Yeah? You understood. Now, God and uh, the, the half tribe of Manasseh and Reuben were on the other side of the Jordan. The other tribes were on the other side. Then these guys arise one day and build an altar. But when the other tribes see that, they realize this is a trespass to the Lord. They have done an abomination. Because they are prescribed places for the construction of the altar. And in themselves they perceived that these are raising an altar for other gods. And the scripture say they talked among them. And they say let us go to war against them. So that they may not bring this wickedness in the land. But as you read the story you realize it's a misconception. Sinehas, who was the pioneer, of the, the champion of the covenant of peace. He tells them, before you destroy them, allow me to go and talk to them. So he goes to God and the Reuben and the half tribe of Manasseh. And he says, my brothers, what, what have you done? Please explain to me what, what is your idea about what you are doing. And these tribes explain to Phinehas. And he says, we are divided. Our children are not able to cross the Jordan to the other side. But we don't want them to forget. We don't want them to forget. The covenant we have kept with our God. And the pattern of the tabernacle of our God. So we sat among ourselves and said let's construct an altar according to the pattern of the altar of our God. This altar shall not be for sacrifice. It shall not be for burnt offerings. Meaning we shall not worship on it. We just want to use it as a teaching aid to our children. So that our our children cannot forget the Lord our God. Yeah. And Fina says, wow. This is a good thing. Even though we had misconceived. And so he returns back to the land. To Gilead and across the Jordan River. And explains to the children of Israel. And they say, wow. Uh, we didn't understand it. We were accusing them for nothing. But now we understand. In fact, now we know that the Lord is among us. You see, to keep on righteousness in the congregation, in the church. It means we should not be very fast in just hearing about others. Or in judging what others are doing. What Phinehas was doing here is that he was able to go to the person to receive explanation. And how many times have you received something from someone? 
Je, ni wakati ngapi umepata kitu kutoka kwa mtu? Or an accusation ama uh, hukum uh, kulaumiwa and you believed it. Na wewe ukaamini. Phineas is teaching us Fineha anatufunza that you need to ask the person. Enda ukaulize yule mtu. If you heard somebody said something. Hata kama mtu alisema ukisikia mtu alisema The right person to ask is him, isn't it? Mtu mwema wa kumuuliza ni yeye. And if somebody did something wrong, na kama mtu alitenda kitu kibaya, you go to him and talk to him about it. Enda kwake yeye ukaongee na yeye kuhusu You don't talk to others about it. Hauongei na watu wengine kuhusu hicho. Speak to them about it. Unaoenda kuongea na yeye. Because sometimes they may not even be knowing that what they did is wrong. Kwa sababu mara nyingi pengine hawaelewi chenye walitenda kibaya. covenant of peace. Kwetu sisi kuweka agano la amani. We must be able to confront our misperceptions. Ni lazima tukaweze kukabiliana na kutoelewa Kutoelewa vizuri kwetu. Have you noticed there's a lot of misunderstandings in church? Je, unajua ya kwamba kuna kutoelewana kwingi kanisani? Hmm? You've seen somebody has done something? Unafikiria mtu amefanya kitu which you didn't like. Chenye haukupenda. But instead of talking to him about it. Lakini wewe hauendi kwake kuongea naye. You share with somebody else. Unashiriki na mtu mwingine. But Phineas. Lakini Phineas says you've not even asked them. Haku ha, anasema hamjawauliza wao. How do you go to destroy people? Unaenda kuangamizaje watu? And you've not even asked them. Na haujawauliza. Let's go ask them. Wacha twende tukawauliza. What do you mean by this? Kwa uh, mnamaanisha nini kwa When you said this what did you mean? Uh, uh, when you said this what did you mean? Ukisema hivi ulikuwa unamaanisha By erecting this altar kwa kujenga madhabahu haya. What was your purpose? Kusudi lako ilikuwa nini? Ask them. Waulize. But most most probably what people would do che, mara nyingi chenye watu watafanya is just to report have you heard what god has done ni kutoa habari nje umesikia did you see they have erected an altar je unajua wamejenga madhabahu and do you know that is an abomination to na unajua hiyo ni uofu kwa mungu that is a trespass hiyo wamekosea they are going to bring a curse to the land wanaenda kuleta laana katika did you know we, unje, By the time it reached the rulers and the kings ikifikia waku they say we must destroy them wanasema lazima tuangamize yet they don't understand the full story na hawajui habari kamili for the move of god to come that we have been uh, preached to about mtembeo wa mungu kukuja wenye tumehubiriwa we must be ready to confront ni lazima tukabiliane and also na pia get in a place where we talk uingie mahali penye tunaongea because many of us do not talk to each other ujue wengi wetu hatuongeleshani we talk about each other tunaongea kinyume na mwingine we, we don't talk to each other lakini hatuongeleshani come on tell your neighbor let's start talking ambia jirani yako tuanze let's kuongea let's start talking to each other tuanze kuongeleshana not about each other sio kuhusu mmoja but kwa talk to each other lakini tuongeleshane mm. what did you mean wewe unamaanisha nini? I saw this it didn't look very well. Niliona hii haikukaa vema. Hmm? Don't say that he is not he is not doing well in, in the work you've given. Tell him. Usiseme na huyu hafanyi kazi vizuri. Mwambie. Mm. Tell him. Mwambie. Say I gave you this job. Mwambie nilikupa hii kazi. You didn't do it very well. Lakin you can improve. You can work on it. Unatakana ufanye vizuri. Don't tell somebody else. Usiambie mtu tofauti. Eh? Yeah? Or don't be cold eh ama usiitwe you, you know it's, it's called uh, what does it call the, the cold treatment uh, ile ya kunyamazia it works in marriage but sometimes it works also in church <laughs> mara nyingi kwa ndoa inafanya kazi lakini kanisani saa zingine pia inaingia but the results are negative lakini madhara yake ni ya kinyume Do, don't say i'll just keep him off no Una talk to him and say uh, i don't think you are, you are doing what you are supposed to do mwambie nafikiria haufanyi chenye wasi or i don't kufanya. think this is the best placement for you ama unamwambia na hisi hiyo nafasi yako mzuri could we try somewhere else je tukuweke mahali kwingine <laughs> because you might think i'm the praise and worship leader kwa sababu unaweza fikiria mimi ni uh, uh, mzuri kabisa katika sifa na ibada but maybe your leader is thinking what is wrong with this guy 
na pengine kiongozi wako anafikiria huyu mjamaa shida yake ni nini why don't you sit together and say my sister si mketi pamoja pengine umwambie dadangu i know you are trying najua unajaribu sana but maybe this is not your area lakini pengine hii sio nafasi yako try somewhere else and or, or this could be pengine unaweza enda ukajaribu kufanya kazi nyingine hii is it making sense je inaleta so before you misunderstand someone sasa kabla ya wewe hauja kutofahamu and destroy hili. their name na uharibu jina yake talk to them ongea na wao understand them muelewe it could be that you might understand why they were doing what they were doing pengine hauku umeelewa chenye alikuwa anafanya so remember fine has first destroyed the leaders among them that were not working right kumbuka fine hasi jambo la kwanza aliharibu viongozi wenye hawako wakienenda sawa and then number two, they in number 31 they went to do, they went to confront the family the people the financiers the people that were around them na jambo la pili yeye alikabiliana na watu wa jamii wenye walikuwa wakitoa fedha ama wakiwasaidia who are not working right ambao hawakuwa wakienenda kwa njia sawa now we see fine has here as a judge in Joshua 22 na tunaona hapa katika Yoshua 22 uh, fine has kama muamuzi who is able to mediate conflict among brethren ambaye anaingiliana kati ya kuto uh, kuto elewana kwa because he was able to seek for truth kwa sababu alikuwa anatafuta ukweli uh, fourthly which is lastly on finehas the covenant of peace guy ya inne ambaye ni ya mwisho kwa finehas ambaye ni mwanzilishi wa agano ya amani i want us to look at his experience in judges chapter 20 tuangalie matukio yake katika waamsi 20 and we shall read na tutasoma judges 20 wa msi sura ya 20 um, so that we are able to get the context ili tupate uh, maelezo kamili let's read the passage tusome hiyo habari verse 1 mstari wa kwanza Come on people let me encourage you don't give up don't give up okay msichoke eh mtaelewa kitu hapa sawa so encourage your fellow you know citizens msichoke kwa sababu tukiwaachia mwande msome nyumbani ya msomani so ili tukaweze kufundisha vizuri tutasomea hapa kwa class hiyo si ndio realize ile assignment tunawapatia hawasomangi pastor unamwambia go read at your own time they don't have their own drive eh? <laughs> so tumeamua kama kanisa tutakuwa tunasoma eh? in fact tunarudi pale kwa scripture reading kabla bishop aja 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 ubiri anatupatia scripture zake kama 3 chapter tunasoma kwanza 15 minutes nikisoma tu kwa sababu amsomi alafu mtu anasema hapo kavazi katikati and the lord wept over israel mshindwa why was he weeping because context haujapata unanielewa yeah. so tusome now we are reading almost 30 verses eh? so back or love mm. now let's read let's go back to verse 1 and start afresh verse 1 
msomaji wa neno lake so having read uh, the 48 verses kama tumesha soma uh, hizo zote 48 question number 1 swala la kwanza how many men in total did the israelites claim of the benjamites je ni wangapi wenye israeli iliua kutoka kwa benyamini 25 how many times did the israelites attack the benjamites je mara ngapi israeli ilienda kushambulia benjamini
kwa kikundi kidogo chenye kilikuwa so that the tribe cannot be lost ndipo ilo kabila isiangamie Benjamin had done wrong lakini Benjamin alikuwa ametenda makosa and he had to be given time to learn na ilikuwa apewe muda asijifunze remember sometimes kumbuka wakati fulani if you do not punish someone kama hauta adhibu mtu or you allow him to go through the consequences of his problem uh, measure uh, whatever mistake ama umruhusu apitie uh, uh, matukio ya makosa yake you block him from learning from growing una au namfanya asijifunze kwa some of us just want to maintain kwa sababu wengine wetu tunataka tutukue pale because he's a gifted person kwa sababu huyo ni mtu mwenye ana kipawa and he plays for us the keyboard and if he leaves nobody else will play anacheza kinanda na kitoweka hakuna mwenye atakayeo so you realize somebody plays for you for 20 years but is not growing lakini unaangalia mtu anacheza kinanda miaka 20 lakini hakui sometimes you need to separate him na uh, wakati fulani inatakana umtenge separate him from his service and his gift umtenge kutokana na uh, kutumika kwake na karama yake so that he grows ili akue and then you restore him na umrejeshe you realize after the israelites fought with benjamites unakumbuka israeli ilipopika vita na wa benjamin after the, they said they burned the cities uh, inasema walichoma mchi so when they come and start rebuilding they remember this thing we should never do again na wakija wakijenga tena hizo miji wanasema hatuta they didn't have wives had to fight to fanya hivi in fact is the israelites who again went to look for wives for them ni wana israeli ndio walienda kutafuta wasichana kwa wake but after a period of learning and growing kama wamejifunza na kukua so they were able to execute judgment ili kuwa wa wadhibu awatoe huko their brothers kwa ndugu zao remember these enemies are not now the the sites we usually remember na hao maadui sio ati wako kule nje penye tuna you remember kukua. you know the sites eh? the jebu sites the he uh, ale ma sites the the canaanites the what eh? All those people are our enemies. Hao ni maadui walikuwa maadui. But remember zetu. everything we are talking about today is about family. Lakini chenye tuongea leo ni kuhusu jamii. That in the family. Katika jamii. That in the family. Wako ndani. And is the, the we are trying to execute discipline to to awake tuatisha nidhamu inside the family katika jamii so then if you are able to execute discipline in the family ukiweza kunidhamisha jamii the family is able to grow jamii itakuwa otherwise we learned yesterday jana tulijifunza if you don't remove such people among you kama hautaondosha watu kama wale ndani mwako the plague cannot be stayed in the congregation tauni haitakoma kula watu katika kusanyiko and that is the righteousness of god na hiyo ndiyo haki ya mungu and for us today in the kingdom na sisi katika ufalme how does god execute uh, righteousness to us mungu anaendelezaje haki yake how br- katika do we bring that story in the old testament to our pl- present day tunaletaje habari hiyo kwa uhalisi in the new katika, covenant katika agano chipi remember in every period we say there are dispensations that god executes his will tulisema ya kwamba kwa kila mahali kuna karne vile Mungu anatoa uh, mapenzi yake. Oh God administers his will differently to different kind of people in different times. Na Mungu huachilia mapenzi yake kitofauti kwa watu wa karne tofauti. And for every people also God makes a pact or a covenant, an agreement. Na kwa kila watu Mungu pia anawafanya Some makano. of them are conditional and others are unconditional zingine zina masharti na zingine hazina conditional meaning predicated upon what things that the recipient is supposed to do before it is they, they reap the benefits ya masharti ni ile yenye wahusika wanapata kufanya ndiposa wakapate faida yake for example the edenic covenant was conditional ukiangalia ile ya edeni ilikuwa na masharti god says you shall not touch this Mungu alisema usikuze hii. As long as you keep to your place or your location you'll be safe. Mradi utakuwa kwa nafasi yako uko sawa. So he says 
don't touch this. Sasa nasema usikuze hii. You may eat of any tree of the, the land of Eden. Waweza kula kwa mti yoyote katika but of this tree thou shall not eat. Lakini kwa mti huu usiwahi kula. That's a conditional one. Hiyo ni ya masharti. But the Adamic covenant was unconditional. Lakini ile ya Adam ilikuwa haina. Says I will when God uses I will means it's just based on his faithfulness. Mungu anasema nitafanya ilikuwa ni kulingana na uaminifu wa Mungu. He had already prophesied. Alikuwa ameshatabiri. That I'm going to create enmity between your seed and her seed. Ya kwamba nitaweka uadui kati ya mbeku and yako your na mbeku yake. is yaki. going to crush his head. Na mbeku yako itaharibu kichwa cha nyoka. The Noahic covenant was also unconditional. Ile agano ya Noa pia haikuwa na masharti. And touching on all humanity, say I will not never destroy again the earth. Na inakuza wanadamu wote. Mungu anasema sitawahi tena haribu inchi Abraham had another covenant. Ibrahim alikuwa pia na agano. That through him the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Ya kwamba kupitia yeye taifa yote ya ulimwengu itabarikiwa. We had another covenant called the Palestinian covenant about the land. Kulikuwa na ingine ambaye tunaita ya Palestina. And of course the Davidic covenant about the kingships. Na pia ya Daudi ya ufalme. But in the new covenant, lakini katika agano jipya, there is how righteousness is given. Kuna jinsia haki Because in inapatuwa. the new covenant, katika In the new covenant katika agano righteousness is imputed to us haki tunaezeko ama tunapewa it is not about just what we do sio kwa matendo yenye tunatenda it's because of what he has already done ni kwa sababu ya chenye amesha kamilisha we have the right standing with god ya kwamba tuko tumesimama haki na mungu and the essentials of righteousness na uh, mambo ya haki which we call justification you are justified by god ambayo umewekwa haki na mungu i want to talk about four things nataka niongelee vitu vine and then we'll pray na tutaomba first it involves the remission of punishment ya kwamba ya kwanza inahusika kutolewa kwa adhabu remission of punishment kutolewa kwa adhabu that means you are declared free inamaanisha umetangazwa huru from every demands of the law kutokana na kila sheria inaitaji let's look at romans chapter 6 verse 7 tuangalie warumi 6:7 6 verse 6 to 7 warumi 6:6 mpaka 7 so he that is dead is freed from sin kwa ye mwenye amekufa ameatoweka ameachiliwa kutoka kwa dhambi okay verse 6 knowing this ukijua hivi that our old man is crucified with him kijua neno hili ya kuwa mtu wa wetu wa kale alisulubishwa pamoja naye that henceforth we should not serve sin ili mwili wa dhambi ubadilike tusimtumikie dhambi tena kwa kuwa yeye aliyekufa is freed from sin amehesabiwa haki bali na dhambi punishment that was upon us inamaanisha hukumu iliyojuu ilikuwa juu yetu says colossians 2:14 the written code that was against us has been blotted ina katika wakolosai 2:14 inasema maandiko ilikuwa kinyume chetu imeondolewa nailing it on the cross ameisulubishwa msalaba so ameisulubishwa sisi wenye tumekufa we are free from the demands of the law tumeondolewa kuhusu righteousness that is imputed on us na haki yenye tumepewa as kingdom citizens kama wenyeji wa ufalme is not just pardon sio tu masamba because when you are pardoned kwa sababu ukisamehewa tu you still have the weight of the law upon you kuna wa uh, uzito wa sheria juu yako this means that the weight of the law has been taken out of you lakini hii inamaanisha kwamba uzito wa sheria umeinuliwa kutoka kwako and punishment has been lifted off of you na kadhabu imeondolewa kwako so you are no longer guilty again sasa wewe hauna hatia tena the bible says there is now no condemnation biblia inasema hakuna hukumu tena to those who are in christ jesus kwa wale walio ndani ya kristo walk not after the flesh ambao hawatembei kulingana na mwili but walk after the spirit lakini wanaenenda kwa roho it is that uh, righteousness of god ni ile haki ya mungu that now removes the pain of guilt and condemnation from us ambayo inatoa ile hukumu uh, na uh, 
ndani mwetu now we don't have the weight of the law sasa hatuna uzito wa sheria we are not waiting for punishment hatungojei kuadhibiwa or living afraid of punishment ama tunaishi tukiokopa we experience adhibiwa. freedom in us tuko na uhuru ndani mwetu the bible mwetu. says whosoever the son of man sets free he is free indeed biblia inasema yeyote mwana anayemweka huru atakuwa huru kabisa it's impossible to be free ni, ni vigumu kukuwa and huru to feel free na kuhisi huru if you still have the weight of punishment kama una uzito wa kuadhibiwa freedom kwa. means that you are completely set free from the punishment that was due to you uhuru inamaanisha umewekwa huru hata na ile kadhabu yenyewe so the righteousness, the righteousness of god has lifted the burden of punishment from us haki ya mungu imeinua uzito uh, wa hukumu juu yetu god does not just set us free mungu hatuweki buri uh, he huru also bure. restores us to favor he restores us to the original place uh, uh, na turejesha pia mahala pa kukubalika we say that when we sinned in the garden of eden tulisema ya kwamba tulipotenda dhambi katika bustani ya edeni god said now man has become like us mungu akasema sasa mtu amekuwa kama sisi let us send him out of eden wacha tumfukuze tumuondoe katika bustani let's of the fruit of life ili asile tunda la uzima and live forever naishi milele so the bible says he drove them out biblia inasema akawaondosha on the eastern side place the cherubims akaweka mayerubi the angels of war malaika wa fita with the sword of flame na uh, upanga unao metameta guard the garden ukaweze akaweze kuizuia bustani from his place akaondoshwa mahala pake and he gave out his rulership na akapeana mamlaka but the righteousness of god lakini haki ya mungu restore us to the place of kingship inaturejesha mahala pa uongozi you know pardon pa pardon msamaha just sets you free inakuweka huru but if you have a criminal record lakini kama wewe ni mhalifu you are not eligible for certain things in the land wewe hauwezi fululiza kutenda mambo fulani with a criminal record you cannot get some jobs kama kuna historia ya uhalifu you can ro- not run for some offices nafasi za kazi or you cannot run for some offices ama hauwezi uh, kimbilia kuongoza but the righteousness of god lakini haki ya restores you back to the original place inakurejesha mahala pa asili it is as if you never sinned ni kana kwamba haujawahi tena it is as if you were never jailed inakaa kama haujawahi the righteousness of god haki ya mungu takes you back to your position in eden inakurejesha nafasi yako you are, where you are able to experience the presence of god penye uli kuwa unahisi uwepo the righteousness of god haki ya mungu restores you to the place of favor inakurejesha mahali pa kubalika galatians chapter 3 verse 13 wakalafia 3:13 for christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law maana kristo ametukomboa kutokana na laana ya sheria having been made a curse for us amefanyika laana kwetu for it is written curse is any man that hangs on the tree kwa sababu imeandikwa amelaaniwa yoyote anayeangikwa mtini the blessings of abraham ndipo baraka za ibrahim may come to the gentiles zije kwa mataifa and we may receive the gift of the spirit na wapate kipawa cha roho through faith kupitia imani The blessing of Abraham now are restored to us. Baraka za Ibrahim zimerejeshwa kwetu. The curse of the law has been broken. Kwa sababu laana ya sheria imeingiliwa. He has us from the curse of the law. Ametukomboa kutokana na sheria. He has become a curse for us. Amekuwa laana kwetu. Verse 26 and 27 says that those who are baptized in Christ. Mstari wa 26 27 inasema wenye umebatizwa na Yesu kwa Yesu. Those who are baptized in Christ wenye mepatizwa ndani ya Kristo they belong to Christ wana wao ni wa Kristo and you are children na nyinyi sasa ni wana verse 28 mstari wa 28 verse 28 says 
Stari wa nane inasema, that now there is now neither Jew nor Greek. Hakuna wa Yahudi wala wa Yudani. There is no bond of free. Hakuna there is no wala. male or female. Hakuna au so we are all now one in Christ. Sisi wote ni wa moja and being ya one in Christ na kukua moja means katika we are heirs according to the promise. Inamaanisha sisi ni waridhi pamoja uh, na Kristo. Now we are Abraham's seed. Sisi ni wana wa Ibrahim. We now can access whatever Abraham was able to access by covenant. Tunaweza shiriki chochote chenye Ibrahim alishiriki. So we are redeemed, we are redeemed. Tumekombolewa. We are redeemed, tumekombolewa. That means we are rescued, tume tolewa kutoka kwa uh, the punishment has been lifted from us ile kadhabu imeinuliwa kutoka kwetu importantly we have been restored na sisi tumerejeshwa jambo la the place mbibu. of reigning and rulership mahala pa kutawala kama wafalme roman 28 says four things work together for good na uh, warumi 8:28 8:28 inasema mambo yote yatendeka kwa wema for those who love god kwa wenye wanaompenda bwana according to his na wanaenenda kulinga wameidu wenye wanaenenda kulingana na kusudi lake according to his purpose kusudi lake for those he foreknew kwa sababu wenye aliwajua he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son aliwachagua wakabadilishwe kufanana na mfano wa mwanae he might be the first one among many brethren ili akuwe mzaliwa wa kwanza kwa wengi that he might be the first born among many brethren akue mzaliwa wa kwanza kwa manduku wengi and that though, for those he predestined na wale wenye aliwachakua he also called aliwaita those that he called wenye aliwaita he also justified aliwaweka haki those that he justified wenye aliwaweka haki he also glorified yeye aliwatukuza so god has restored us by his righteousness mungu ameturejeshwa kwa haki yake to the place of our rulership kwa mahali pake pa utawala now we are kings and priests together with him sasa sisi ni wafalme na kuhani kwake that's why i love this gospel niposa napenda hii because it doesn't matter where you have come from kwa sababu haijalishi umetoka it doesn't matter how terrible your record has been haijalishi habari zako za nyuma it doesn't matter whichever hole you went into haijalishi uliingia shimo god has not just lifted the burden of the law from off you mungu hame hajaondoa tu ile uzito uh, wa god has kwa. restored you to a regional place mungu amekurejesha mahala pako and imagine asi. he says now he's our brother na ebu fikiria anasema ya kwamba sasa ni ndugu yetu the writer of the book of hebrew says mwandishi wa kitabu cha waebrani anasema he is not ashamed to call us brethren ya kwamba yeye haibiki kutuita sisi manduku did you know that no matter our record je unajua ya kwamba haijalishi uh, uh, historia yetu right now we are the same level sisi tuko sasa sambamba did you know that je unajua hiyo God has restored us Mungu ameturejesha to the original place of rulership mahala pale pa utawala Now the command can be given to you afresh Sasa amri inaweza Says, tolewa kwako Have dominion inaweza tolewa anasema kutawala He has placed you in a place of kingship Ana amekuweka mahala pa ufalme Yeah you are not your history wewe sio historia yako you are not your record wewe sio habari zako za nyuma kingdom of kings and priests wewe ni jamii ya kifalme na kuhani and god has given you the same power na mungu amekupa nguvu mamlaka ile that raised ile. jesus from the dead ambayo iliinua yesu kutoka kwa that wafu. power worketh inside of you nguvu hizo zatenda kazi ndani yako he says now unto him who is able na inasema yule ambaye anaweza to do exceedingly abundantly kutenda zaidi ya above all that we ask or imagine yale yenye tunauliza ama kufikiria according to the power that worketh within us kutokana na nguvu zinazotenda kazi ndani yako there is a power at work within you kuna nguvu zenye zinatenda kazi ndani yako you have the mwaku. genes of a king inside of you kuna ufalme ndani mwako that god is going to use ya kwamba Mungu ataenda kutumika to extend his kingdom on the face of the earth. Kuendeleza ufalme wake hapa duniani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the purpose of God for you. Ni kusudi la Mungu kwako. 
Remember he says Kumbuka alisema Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 Wa moja tano, that since I heard of your faith in God was, uh, the, file nilisikia habari ya imani yenu na love for the saints na upendo wenu kwa I wapendua, cease not to make mention of you in my prayers Sikomi kuwaombea the God ya kwamba Mungu the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Baba wa Mungu wa uh, Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo The Lord Christo. of glory will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him atawapa roho wa hekima na ufunuo ndani mwake that your eyes being enlightened ya kwamba macho yenu ikatiwe you may know the hope of your calling mkajue tumaini la wito wake and the riches of his glory of his inheritance in the saints na utukufu wa mwito wake katika watakatifu and the exceedingly great power to us as who believe na nguvu zake zilizo hazina zenye hazina kipimo according to his mighty working power kulingana na nguvu zake zenye zinatenda that he wrote kazi, in jesus ambazo alizi, alizifanya when he raised him up from the dead alipo uh, muinua yesu kristo kutoka kwa wafu him at his own right hand na kumweka mahali pake pa mkono wa kulia in the heavenly places katika mbingu about principalities and powers juu ya Uh, nguvu zote and might na ma, uh, and dominion na mamlaka and every name na kila jina that is named ambalo limetajwa not only in this world sio tu ulimwengu ni hapa also in that which is to come lakini kwa ulimwengu ambao waja this same power his nguvu hizo is at work inside of you zinafanya kazi ndani yako the same power that was working inside jesus nguvu zenye zilitenda kazi ndani yako god has lifted you above your punishment mungu amekuinua zaidi ya kadhabu ile but not only that lakini sio hivyo he has restored you to the original place amekurejesha mahali pa asili now you are seated in heavenly places umeketi kule juu mbinguni and the bible says now we are hidden with christ in Bible. God. Biblia inasema tumefichwa na Kristo ama ndani ya place is not on earth. Mahali petu sio hapa duniani. Your physical place might be here. Mahali pako pa Oh, but I want to tell you you are not seated here. Lakini haujaketi hapa. You are seated with Christ. Umeketi na Kristo. In heavenly places. Kule mbinguni. We are ruling together with him. Tunatawala pamoja naye. He has restored you to his place. Amekurejesha wewe kwa nafasi yako. Number 3. Number ya tatu. He has imputed righteousness. And ametuwekea haki. He has imputed righteousness. Um ametuwekea haki. He has imputed righteousness. In inside of us. Putin. Ametuwekea righteousness. Haki ndani mwetu see now what you you are not working for sasa wewe hautendi kazi ili upate but you are working from lakini unatenda kazi kutokana na it's not what you do sio chenye unafanya but you do because lakini unafanya kwa sababu you do not work haufanyi kazi to be righteous ili ukue haki but you have works lakini una kazi because you are righteous kwa sababu wewe ni haki it is not something you are working for sio kitu chenye unafanya kazi ndio upate but it's something you are working from lakini unatenda kazi kutokana nayo you are not looking forward to hautazamii kukua you are standing in wewe upo ndani the righteousness of god katika haki ya God has already placed righteousness inside of you. Mungu ameweka haki ndani mwako So he tayari. said you are the righteousness of God. Ndipo sasa anasema wewe ni mwenye haki wa Mungu. Therefore now there is no condemnation. Sasa hakuna hukumu. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Wenye wako ndani ya Kristo. Walk not after the flesh. Wenye wanatembea sio kwa mwili. But after the spirit. Lakini kwa roho. It says for the law kwa sababu sheria verse 2 of the life of Jesus Christ mstari wa pili ya Kristo Yesu has done what has condemned ime hukumu the law of sin and death 
sheria ya dhambi na kifo the law of sin and death sheria ya dhambi na kifo for that which the law was three mstari wa tatu was sababu kile ambacho sheria was not able to do in that it was weak in the flesh haikuweza kufanya kwa sababu ya udhaifu wa mwili god sending his own son mungu akatuma kupitia mwanawe the mwanawe. likeness of the sinful flesh kwa mfano wa mwili dhaifu and for sin condemn sin in the flesh akahukumu dhambi kwa mwili so that mwili. the righteousness, righteousness of the law ndiposa haki ya sheria might be fulfilled in us ikatimizwe ndani mwetu walk not after the flesh wanaotembea sio kwa mwili but after the spirit lakini kwa roho so the righteousness of god is fi- is fulfilled inside of us sasa haki ya mungu inatimilika ndani mwetu no because of what we do sio kwa mambo yenye tunafanya because of his finished work already in us kwa, lakini kwa sababu ya kazi yenye alitimiliza so our righteousness is not the fruit of our works sasa haki yetu sio tunda la matendo yetu but our righteousness is the outflow of his work inside of us lakini haki yetu ni mtiririko wa kazi yake ndani mwetu so he has become our righteousness amekuwa haki yetu and we manifest that righteousness na tunadhihirisha ile haki philippians chapter 3 verse 7 wa filipi 3:7 Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 wa Filipi 3:7 It says but what things were gain to me fitu zenye nilihesabu kuwa bora those are counted loss for Christ nimehesabu bure kwa sababu ya Kristo verse 8 mstari wa 8 yeah doubtless ah uh, hivyo and i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my lord nahesabu fitu zote kuwa bure kuto uh, nikifuatilia maarifa ya Kristo Yesu for whom i have suffered the loss of all things ambaye vitu zote nime and do count them but dung that i may win christ na hesabu kuwa mafi ili nikaweze kumpata Yesu Kristo mstari wa 9 and be found in him na ni kwenda ni mwake not having my own righteousness nisiwe na haki yangu which is of the law ambayo ni ya sheria but that which is through the faith of christ lakini ile haki ambayo inatokana na imani katika kristo which is of god by faith haki ambayo ni ya mungu kupitia imani verse 10 mstari wa 10 that i may know him ni mjue yeye and the power of his resurrection na nguvu za ufufuo wake and the fellowship of his suffering na kushiriki katika mateso yake being made conformable unto his death hata mpaka kifo chake conform is to take the shape of kubadilishwa ni kuchukua sura yake umbo la the righteousness of god kwa ile umbo la haki ya mungu i may know him nimjue yeye that righteousness which is not of my own haki ambayo sio ya which is not according to the fle- uh, to the law ambayo sio ya sheria but about his righteousness inside of me lakini haki yake ndani mwangu when you pour a liquid inside this bottle ukimwaga uh, kitu chochote hapa ndani cha maji it conforms to this vessel inabadilika inakuwa kama ile conformed to this the ship inabadilishwa kulingana na umbo la hiyo so, chupa what god is saying sasa mungu anasema righteousness inside of us haki yake ndani mwetu through ambayo through his sufferings kupitia mateso yake conforms inatubadilisha to his image kwa mfano wake we now become like christ tunakuwa kama kristo let me give you a couple of scriptures here niwape maandiko kadhaa hapa for your own reading wa kusoma kwako First Corinthians 1:30 Wa Korintho wa kwanza 1:30 Because of him that you are in Christ uh, kwa sababu yake ndani ya Kristo Christ become for us wisdom from God amekuwa hekima kwa Mungu that is that is our righteousness ambaye ni haki yetu holiness utakatifu a redemption na ukombozi Romans 4:25 Warumi 4:25 was delivered for our death ali pelekwa kwa kifo chetu was delivered to death for our sins alipelekwa kwa kifo kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu for our justification na akainuliwa kwa kuwekwa haki kwetu roman said verse 4 wa rumi 8 mstari wa 4 in order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fully met in us 
uh, ili haki ya utimilifu wa sheria ikuwe kwetu who do not live after the flesh ambao hawaishi kulingana na mwili but after the spirit lakini ka, uh, kwa first corinthians 5:21 wa Korintho wa kwanza 5:21 God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us alimfanya mwenye hakuwa na hatia akue dhambi kwetu so that he might become the righteousness of God ili tuwe haki ya let me finish by number 4 wacha nimalizie ya 4 that now we have a legal standing ya kwamba tuna sasa msimamo halali before the lord ya bele ya bwana a legal standing a msimamo halali before the lord bele za mungu anybody that appears in a court of law yoyote mwenye anaingia katika kotini must be properly before the court are you are you proper before the court you have a legal standing to be before the una halali wa kusimama mbele ya koti you are you are appearing appropriate una jiwakilisha vema so god gives you the legal standing sasa mungu anakupa uhalali wa kusimama before his presence mbele ya uwepo wake that means now before god you do not become a stranger ah uh, inamaanisha mbele ya mungu sasa wewe sio mgeni you have a right wewe una haki as a son kama mwana you have legal standing una uhalali wa kusimama mbele yake you are properly appearing before him wewe unapatikana mbele yake kihalali because he has imputed righteousness kwa sababu amekupa haki because the curse the written code that was against us we said was was uh, been broken uh, colossians 2:14 kwa sababu tulisema ya kwamba ile maandiko iliyokuwa kinyume yetu imeshaondolewa mailing it on the cross ameiweka msalabani the bible says for he has made a public spectacle of it biblia inasema ameiweka aibu wazi triumphing over it akishinda so god has triumphed over what was killing us sasa mungu ameishinda kitu chenye kilikuwa kinatuua we have said that christ became uh, has redeemed us from the curse of the law na tukaona ya kwamba kristo ametukomboa na laana ya sheria we have also read that he has become our righteousness na tumesoma ya kwamba amekuwa haki yetu so we are the beloved of god sasa sisi ni wapendwa wa mwenyezi we are the redeemed of god ni wakom Bolewa, o, and because now our na... kingship status sasa hali yetu ya ufalme we properly appear before him tuna uh, enenda mbele zake kihalali we have confidence tuna ujaziri first john chapter 4 verse 17 yohana wa kwanza 4:17 this is how love is made complete among us upendo unakamilika katikati yetu so that we'll have confidence in the day of judgment ili tuwe na ujaziri wakati wa hukumu In this world we are like Jesus. Ah uh, katika ulimwengu huu tuko or, kama Yesu. Or some translations say we are in this world just like he is. Ah uh, ama tafsiri zingine zinasema tuko kama chinzi alivyo hapa duniani. We have the right standing before him. Tuko na msimamo ulio sawa na yeye. The right of Hebrews Hebrews 4:16 say now we can enter boldly na mwandishi wa Hebrania 4:16 anasema tunaweza ingia sasa kwa ujasiri to in the throne of grace katika kiti cha that we may obtain mercy ili tupate rehema and find grace to help us in time of need na rehema itusaidie sisi but what say seeing that we have such a high priest lakini mstari wa 14 inasema tukiwa na kuhani mkuu na that is passed into heaven ambaye amepita mbinguni Jesus the son of God Yesu mwana wa Mungu let us hold fast our profession tushikilie ungamo letu verse 15 mstari wa 15 for we have not a high priest kwa maana hatuna kuhani mkuu which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities ambaye hakuzwi na udhaifu wetu but was in all points tempted like we are lakini alijaribiwa mara yote jinsia tunajaribiwa yet without sin lakini bila kutenda therefore sasa 
we have boldness tuna uchaziri because we have the right standing with god kwa sababu tuna msimamo wa haki na you are not getting before god as a beggar how we end mbele ya mungu kama you have the right standing before him wewe una msimamo haki ama sawa sawa boldly knowing that what you expect you shall receive unaenda kwa uchaziri ukijua chenye nahitaji nitakipokea the bible has promised us Biblia imetuwa hivi. Whatever you you agree as touching anything on the earth it ya, shall be delivered. Ya kwamba chochote mnachokubaliana hapa duniani kitapeanwa. Mark 10 Mark 10:27 that this is impossible with God but with men but not with God for with God all things are possible. Ma, Marko 10:27 inasema chochote chenye hakiwezekani na wanadamu vitu vyote vinawezekana na Mark 11:23 for if you have little faith as a mustard seed you shall speak to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea but if you doubt not but believe that whatever you say shall come to pass you shall have what whatsoever you say mtakuwa na chochote mtakachoomba Verse 24 say whatever things you desire when you pray believe that you have it and you shall have them Stari wa 24 inasema chochote mnachoomba amini unacho nawe utakipokea So you shall you are not doing patapotea Sasa yeah wewe hau You have a legal standing Una msimamo halali And whatever you ask in his will Na chenye unauliza kwa mapenzi yake You receive it Unakipokea Let me give you a couple of scriptures here then we close for your own reading maandiko uh, machache niwapatie kwa kusoma kwako Romans 3:25 Warumi 5:25 Galatians 4 verse 5 Wakalathia 4:5 Romans 8:33 Warumi 8:33 Colossians 2:14-15 Wakolosai 2:14 verse John chapter 4 verse 8 Yohana wa kwanza 5:25 uh, Uh, Amen. Jesus, 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 Jesus,